Y'all know what time it is. What's good, y'all, man? What's good with y'all? It's early morning for me, but just finished with that greatness not too long ago, and we had chapter 10, 13. Um, Not a necessarily bombshell chapter as far as information or or anything like that or uh, exposition on plot points. It's really just focused on two or three things, really, right? So, first off, with Rooftop Zorro and all his legendary feats that's, you know, that's went down these past few chapters, I think Oda's taking shots, right? With with the cover chapter, what's up with this, man? We got Zorro sleeping, and, you know, I don't know... What's Sanji's thinking, but he already, even for someone like Sanji who has access to fire, he already felt the heat from him. He already know that's some smoke he's just not ready for, right? If he even knew exactly what Zoro did up there on that rooftop, man. Not to mention Kumurasaki. <laughs> He wouldn't, he'd have more respect, but hey, props to Sanji, man, for, 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 for carrying the boy around, literally, uh, for once, you know, I, I, they're thick and thin, man, but, uh, yeah, I just thought that was interesting, especially him holding a a knife, I'd be forgetting he can actually use his hands, even though he doesn't, for whatever reason that he's still sticking to, but anyway, enough of that. The beginning of the chapter, just, we're already right there. No talking, just straight up, hey, old D and Nami, and we out here in Big Mom and chaos, right? Which, that's all Big Mom is about, unpredictability and just pure terror and chaos. We got both of those, (laughs) right? Because... You know, Ulti's not going nowhere, and I don't think anybody thinks Ulti had any chance against Big Mom. You know, we were, I was already, I don't have to tell you that, right? No one had to tell you that. Um, if you thought different, man, I, I don't know, you know. I really don't know what, uh, I just, you see him stuttering and, and stammering. That's how bad it is. But anyway... Big Mom having access to her homies is a problem. And the strategy that the Super Nota had on the rooftop, 100% act, you know, I 100% align with that as far as this is how you kind of, you can't deal with Big Mom, right? You can't physically beat her. You can't physically force her to do anything. You just have to immobilize her. Right, even with Queen, even with Big Mom being a sea stone, even with her drowning, like none of this stuff seems to really matter in the end, right? So the best way to deal with her is just to make sure she can't move. So we see a few, few Jean on some polymerization type stuff from the the, the 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 new trio of original homies, I guess you could say, with Hera. And y'all remember, I was, I was like, man, I don't know what Hera's going to be on. Hera's not like a, a wild card. Hera was a wild card, all right. <laughs> Wilder than what I was thinking. Uh, first of all, Prometheus is on some other stuff. I don't know what that's about because, first and foremost, why are you, in a sense, asking your mama to create your girlfriend that look like your brother <laughs> in a sense right like Zeus Prometheus and, and Napoleon are, are brothers that technically that's what they should be right so you ask your mom to wow you know y'all only fans uh generation or something else man that's crazy but um and we see Hera is just Behaving like she should. Like, what are you on? I'm not here for that. I'm here to take care of business. 
So I, I do like the focus, you know, because that's what Zeus lacks, right? Focus. That's the only thing he really lacked. He didn't like the ability. He lacked focus and direction, which so does Big Mom, right? So this got weird because we went from One Piece to, like, some full metal alchemist attack on Titan type stuff because uh, I didn't see that coming. Like, I kind of forgot that Big Mom be on that, you know, during her introduction. It was implied she ate a person, you know, by the community at least. And then <laughs> we seen it happen with Mother Caramel and the kids. And that part to me makes it even more, I assume it's done on purpose, right? We had Zeus and Hera for all intents and purposes or a brother and sister. And you had Hera eat Zeus. And you ate your brothers and sisters for all intents and purposes. This is right back with Mother Caramel and the kids. And then remember what I was saying before about last, uh, my last video about the difference between does Big Mom remember things during hunger pangs and during amnesia, which sounds, didn't make any sense, right? But she remembered who Tama was. So, you know. I don't know if Big Bomb did this part on purpose, like just being evil and wicked, or was there a meaning behind that, or it could just be a coincidence. I just don't think so, because of what Big Mom's experience was. So it could be a really chance that she actually does remember eating the kids and all that other stuff, and she just doesn't care, or I don't know. Like, you know I'm not really sure. But one thing I do know, when Nami fed Zeus the black spheres, <laughs> gotta watch y'all, the spheres. <laughs> um, or at least attempted to feed Zeus with them, right? There's a chance they maybe ate a couple and hair explodes, or maybe because we got a fusion between the homies in a sense in this chapter that we could see the good old, you know, um, two personalities in one person, like Goten and Trunks, Vegito type thing with Zeus and Hera. Since they're, in the, they, they're, they're brother and a sister in a sense, but if you're going the Greek mythology route, you could go all types of ways with that, right? But I will say normally I would assume that Zeus is not dead, however... With the exception of Pell, because that had a little drama behind it. Dramatic deaths in One Piece usually actually are deaths, even if it's not a main character. Like, even Yasue, you know, for the short time that he was in the story, you know, the way that his death was done was pretty dramatic. And I was laughing about this earlier. Like, Zeus got more character development in like two or three pages and then Chopper has the entire series. From an emotional standpoint, I felt what Zeus was going through. No, I'm joking, I'm not <laughs> going that route. Like y'all know I'll be on that. But I will say that I did appreciate the amount of different emotions that Zeus was going through, even though the main focus was one emotion in particular. Um, because that looked, it was written like he was a real person, right? Except for that, oh, you know, my last breath, I'm going to, that kind of thing. Because most people, when they're dying, are not going to do that for some people that turn their back on them. Just to be remembered that, that no, that's, that's not how real life works. However, though, the, what he was going through mentally and what he was experiencing, I was like, oh, that, that was like some real... You know, if it wasn't One Piece and you applied to something else, that would be a very um, drawn-out scene, right? If that was a movie, it's just that it's One Piece and it's kind of goofy, you know. But that was kind of real. <laughs> it got kind of dark. I'm like, oh, eat them. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't care who you are, even if you're a person that is one of these people that have zero fears. You have the fear of being eaten alive. You just don't know it because it's not a natural part of the human experience uh, to have to worry about being eaten alive. 
But being eaten alive is just not the way to go out. And I don't know how souls work, but I would imagine having your soul extracted would be a painfully a painful process. And it probably hurts you different than physical pain, you know. There's probably no passing out or nothing. You just, you just, <laughs> it just hurts. <laughs> On some Sukiyomi type stuff. I, I don't know. But uh, I just thought that was, that was wild. And like, you got cannibalism now. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And then, because that phaser beam move thing. That just lets you know we had no business making out of whole cake out of alive. Now I know characters have flaws. Humans are like this, right? If you imagine our world where we had access to these abilities, and then there was people like Big Mom who are pretty close to indestructible, where out the entire planet, regardless of what the the population is, there's like a hundred, there's, there's like a single digit, maybe, or, you know, there's less than 15 people on this entire planet who could touch you, right? There would be people who had no regard for logic whatsoever. So the fact that Big Mom behaves this way is really not that, like, I understand why some people have a problem with it because of when these things occur. I think that's the biggest issue, but if Big Mom was focused, like if you take Big Mom's same ability, same everything, and you gave Big Mom the personality of Blackbeard, the series would probably be over already. You know what I mean? So just be thankful that she never fully matured um, emotionally. She did from an understanding you need to be stronger than people and how the real world works, but Clearly, Big Mom just never um, emotionally matured because she never had to, right? Even to the point of I can have an entire family of (laughs) 87 children. (laughs) And I can create sentient beings, you know what I mean? I can make friends, I can, she can do whatever she wants, so... It's really not a big deal to me how random she is. Uh, It's just, I think it's one of those things where it's like in sports when you see a skilled player, a really skilled player, but they're missing that one thing. You're like, how come you can't do that? And you'd probably be like one of the best in the league if you could just do that. That's what Big Mom is. So that's kind of how I take it. (laughs) But your man, you already know what time it is now, but your man's. My man, one, one clap, Kaido. You already know, cause it's one, and you're done, son. Hey, check this out, Luffy. You're my man's. You know, future pirate king. I give you that. It, it's definitely, it's definitely obtainable for your future. But y'all know like I know. I've been saying I'm not the only one, right? There's some of us that's in this camp that's like, there's no way he's catching this 1v1 smoke. With, with, with Captain 1, <laughs> Clap Kaido. It's not happening, son. Um, Oda is showing you, like, he's not going to let him show in his way through the entire new world. He's going to catch some plot devices because he's the main character in just like real life. People do get lucky. So, I give him that. But just straight up, oh, I just learned something new. And I'm going to clap somebody with it who's been fighting longer than I've been alive. With abilities longer than I've been alive. Like, even back in my Luffy video, my main thing that I stress is... My only issues with Luffy aren't even real issues. The dude is 20 years old, if you think about it. I think his birthday already passed, or it's this much, but he's only like 20, 21 years old. Everybody he's dealing with has been doing this. You're not just going to clap everybody. It's not going to happen. It's one of the reasons why I think his ability is rubber, because he always bounces back. That's fine with me, but you're not going to just do that, man. <laughs> you just It just doesn't happen, and it's not going to happen today. <laughs> 
I was, you know, some people, I understand why you would think the way you do. I'm not even telling you it was wrong, but after you got one shot the first time, you should have known then. Cause, because it changed the entire tone for that whole aspect of, oh, he's just going to win. Now, I already know there's going to be some people that, okay, well, that's his second L. We already know what happens after he takes two L's. Honestly, I don't think that's going down this time. I don't think this is going to be the time. Like, I get it. We didn't see him use Conkers with Gear 4. We didn't see Snake Man because I don't think Kaido in high reform. Even in high reform, I don't think he's faster than Snake Man. Snake Man's probably the fastest thing we've seen in the series. It's not like Kizaru or something like that. That level, right? Where unless you have what Kata Curry has, that level of observation. And even then, you can see it coming and still get clapped. And it's just, you know, <laughs> we've seen it many times in the series where you see it coming and it still hits you. So. Is what it is, but um, he he just wasn't gonna be kind of like that. That wasn't going down, not one v one. So we might see Yamato jump into the picture. Maybe Yamato is the one because they've been. It seems like that's been the focus, not like a focus, but off like within the plot, right? Of what's going on, kind of Yamato's interactions and and. If they're, what their closure is going to be, if they even get any. Um, but there's going to be something there, right? Because Kaido is the way he is for a reason. And even the statement, what he said about Luffy, like, about faith and how humans have faith. And depending on how that viz translates that, right? Always support the viz. Um, we have another statement about him referencing humanity and how humans behave, implying that he's not, which we, we know why he would say something like that now. But on top of that, it's very possible the way that they're raised and they're grown up, these aspects of humanity might just not exist. I don't know. You know, maybe that's part of the reason why he's like that, to where humanity is very intriguing to him. Um, these ideals about faith and passing on will and stuff like that, that might be a new concept from their culture, you know, as far as where he's from. I don't know if they're going to touch that deep on it, but... It, it would make sense if that's the case because it's just you can't something you've never seen before to somebody else could be normal we see that every day that's why a lot of us enjoy the internet right because something to you that's foreign and an idea you never would have got you can easily have exposure to so in a sense for Kaido it might not be something he was exposed to until he started having consistent reaction uh, interactions with humanity. So, and depending on how they got here in the first place, right? Because the thing about Kaido that could be weird in a sense for the rest of the story is the how this space thing applies to the 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 verse, right? With the celestial dragons and the emphasis on dragons and stuff like that. Eh, they might even be from Earth. I don't know what you know. Y'all know. Y'all remember Scott Pia, right? And y'all remember the the O'Harans, right? So it, it could be, and then the thing with Vegapunk, and and then the time time through, and all that. You know that extra stuff about the series that even though it's not the main focus, there's things that we're aware of that you have to take into account uh, when you're thinking about certain statements and. Is at least in this sense, it's not like a, a cognitive thing, right? Where we just pop up from space out of nowhere. It could just be a weird thing that either the humans on the One Piece world, the actual their world, they might not either been there first, or they've always been there, and dragons are from somewhere else. It could be some weird stuff like that. I don't think that's something we're going to get in Wano, but I'm just saying in the series, because that's been, the space thing's been brought up over and over again, and even the Empty Throne got stars on it, so it's been applied for a long time, but um, flashbacks with Kaido and Yamato may be coming up, not sure, um, they definitely, we, 
want that interaction anyway because it gets more insight on Kaido as far as maybe a flashback and we're on some Disney stuff where's your model's mom and who is your model's mom we got Bakken and Weevil and we don't know who Weevil's pops is <laughs> supposedly Yonko and then we got the other Yonko where we don't know who the mom is you know what I mean and then we got a future Yonko <laughs> well cause I ain't been calling Luffy a Yonko y'all know that I've been saying that um we know why that happened and I even made a joke about him even before he found out about his bounty being a billion remember uh he thought his bounty went down and when I was just doing audio and stuff, like even back then, one of the things I talked about was do bounties decrease? Because we seen him get frozen, but can he decrease? So the fact that Luffy thought his bounty went down, it's like, oh, so maybe that is a possibility because I was thinking if somebody saw him get one shot by Kaido, his bounty would go down in a sense where you might have some territory in some of these stories, but we just seen you not be able to hang with an equal so you can't you know what i'm saying because even with blackbeard he had a territory and all this other stuff but he still had to physically beat some people so <laughs> you know getting clapped by your peers doesn't work too well but that never obviously transpired but i just thought it was interesting um luffy actually thinking that his bounty went down meaning that it, that something that actually probably does happen in the series it's just not often enough to, or, to be worth talking about but um yeah that was crazy he got one clapped again because my man won and you're done man and um yeah he gonna need help hopefully law catch him somewhere maybe a motto something like that but you you can't beat him by yourself yet you know he might have a couple more tricks up his sleeve, but this high reform stuff, man, is I think he, he needs everything. And he doesn't have awakening yet either. So and I don't think oh, they just want to give him everything. Cause for all right, and they really kind of still in the beginning of the new world. And even with the projection of the series being what it is, I don't think he wants to give him three two to three power ups of one art. That's just that hasn't been done yet, so why would it be done now? You know what I mean? It would feel kind of rushed. Um, him mastering stuff that he's been doing the whole time has, like, the actual progression, right? He's never just pulled stuff way out of left field yet as far as his ability, so I just don't see that being a thing later on either. So, But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and Hawkins and... um. Hawkins and Killer. Maybe we get that. Maybe we go away from um, Big Mom and that to find out because this is the thing with Kid, right? Kid is alright. I just don't think his abilities is a good matchup for someone like Big Mom where physical damage is useless. So unless he has some other ability through electricity or magnetism or whatever his implied abilities could be, doesn't stand a chance. Uh, I will say one thing though. I don't know if it was just because of the law or the fact that homies can't use hockey. I did find it strange that Zeus was able to be captured in a box. So I don't know what that's implying more on law's ability more so than kid because it being metal, we seen Zeus eventually did get out, but there was a time where he, he just couldn't get out of the box. So, I don't know if Kid wants to try something similar to see if it'll work on Big Mom, but I don't think he has the, that type of ability because it's not just physical, right? It would probably imply that his hockey would have to be really up there um, to do that. Maybe add like a second level to his armament on a piece of metal type stuff to, to capture Big Mom, but or because Smoker does something similar, right, with the sea stone that he has on the edge of the his weapon. It's maybe kid can 
because he can manipulate metal without physically touching it. And it's part, maybe, maybe he can make some kind of sea stone thing with metal and sea stone, like metal chains with sea stone or something to do with sea stone. Because what I, I just, <laughs> you see how far I got to go to try to figure out how kid is even. Because this slamming Big Mom around and punching her, that, it looks cool, but come on, man. Remember back in Whole Kid, we watched her eat a rocket, man. Like she ate a rocket. So anything, there's no physical, other than sea stone, right? From what we've seen, there's no physical object strong enough in the verse to damage these people. And because of what kids' abilities are, it's not like something with like like a kuma or a law, where their abilities are can surpass anything that's physical too, like law can't. Which that should have been applied. I don't know why people were acting like they were so surprised. Like, oh, uh, I seen that because you know I was out of touch for a couple of weeks. So I went when I was looking at content. I was like. Why are people acting like they're surprised? Like, oh, well, yeah, it was confirmed. Well, I couldn't move them because they're hockey. Like, that was always, I thought, this is where the community treats me out sometimes because we forget about stuff that we was on where people had been saying that. Like, since it's the, been the most implied answer about why law doesn't do stuff, the, that, like, as soon as we learned what law's abilities were and what hockey was. Like, I don't know. Maybe some people be faking it. I'm not talking about anybody specific. I mean, like, uh, people in chats and stuff acting like they're like, oh, yeah, like, what? This has been implied, at least to me. Like, why else wouldn't he able to? Like, the only thing that stops Devil Fruits is hockey. We haven't seen, there's only two things we've seen stop Devil Fruit abilities. That's hockey and sea stone. And they're not made out of sea stone, so it must be their hockey. Same thing with Doflamingo, like, it wasn't just that he knew Law's ability. It doesn't really mean anything, if you think about it, other than you reacting to where you think Law's going to put you when you're in room. He couldn't move Doflamingo except for when he wasn't focused. Like, they, even if you look back at Dressrosa now in that fight, like, when the first time he got caught with Red Hawk, he wasn't focused. And, like, even the time when Law used room on Dof, he Law stabbed himself through the foot to, to do it and then use room. So... Him not being able to move the Yonko is just, I don't know. I don't know why that bothered me. You know, people acting like that. I don't know why. I was just weird. Like, I was like, hey, why did that bother me? I just thought it was weird. But um, my point being, you need a non-physical ability to deal with Big Mom. And until we see Kid be able to manipulate something in a sense where the way Rio would work or something... You can pretty much consider Kid clapped <laughs> and he'll be back to useless D mid again. But uh, maybe Killer shows up to help and Sonic Scythe can do something because that doesn't look like a physical thing. But um, that's all I can really think about. Yeah. Nami Usa, boy. <laughs> They're having a rough go in this arc, you know. But Usopp is going to have. Hit- there's so many stories to tell. Because he, he's seen some stuff. Zeus often seen some things. He didn't see Whole Cake Island inside the mirror world. But he saw some, he's seen some stuff. <laughs> well, man, Zeus man. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, holler at y'all for a few about the chapter 10, 13. I, I don't really have that many. Pre- like I said, I ain't really predicting it's just... Maybe Yamato meeting up with Kaido or something of that nature. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think. I think I got everything. This chapter didn't really have a lot of information. It was more focused. Yeah, that's it. Well, now have a fun weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe as usual. And I'll probably catch you on Tuesdays. Peace.